Hi folks, in this video I show you how I update Captain Darnath Lysander of the Imperial Fists using one of the new Terminator models. As you can imagine I started off with the Terminators in the new Terminators kit as well as the Terminator Captain from the Leviathan box. Now you may ask why I just didn't use the Terminator Captain from the Leviathan box as the base. Well the reason behind that is I wanted to do something a little bit different. I have seen other people convert that model into Lysander. However, if you know me by now, you know that I want to do things a little different. With that being said, I started off with the Terminator Captain as I wanted to keep hold of the cloak. And from the Terminator kit, I used one of the front chest pieces and it fits super snugly, which was extremely satisfying. For the legs, I use the ones that I'm pointing at right now as I like the idea that he's walking forward, very similar to the original model. I then clipped them from the sprue, tidied them up and glued them together before test fitting them against the torso. In preparation for the Imperial Fist symbol that I'm going to be adding to the knee pad, with the combination of my hobby clippers, hobby knife and sanding sticks, I remove the Crux Terminatus from the right knee pad. Once I was happy with how that was looking, I glued the shin pad to the legs as well as the small little hip armour pieces, whatever they are. I then wanted to tackle the Fist of Dawn, Lysander's bespoke Thunderhammer. As the main base, I used the Thunderhammer from the Assault Intercessor kit. However, I wanted to make it a bit more meatier. That sound right? Meatier. Anyway, bigger. I wanted to make it a bit bigger. So I used the power source from the Adrax Agatone model that I had laying around, the one that I used for Vulcan Histan. He was just bits, spare bits. So I cut that out using my little blue tack method. Basically, you place the piece that you want cutting down on some blue tack and then push down on there rather than slicing into your board or your desk or anything like that. Once I'd removed the head of the hammer, I then used my hobby clippers just to remove any excess bits of plastic. Remember folks, always cut away from yourself, otherwise this happens. Next up, using that thunder hammer I mentioned from the Assault Intercessor kit, I used my hobby clippers to remove the power source and the head of the hammer. For the fist that's in the middle of the Fist of Dawn, that's, that's too many fists, and that's poor phrasing. I again dipped into the Assault Intercessor kit using this arm holding a knife. The reason I wanted to use this arm is because I really liked the armour plating on the forearm. It kind of fit in with the original model and how that looked. However, one thing I did regret is I really wish I filled in all of the armour plate seam lines. However, looking at it, it wasn't too bad. I just wish I'd filled them in. I then use a combination of my clippers and hobby knife just to remove the knife, the hilt and the handle. I made sure to test fit the pieces to make sure they actually went together first before removing the head of the hammer and the claw of the hammer from each other. For those of you who are new to the channel, I have a massive list of kit bashes and conversion ideas that folks in the community have suggested. You can find a link to it in the description below. If you notice that there isn't something on there that you'd like to see, then let me know and I'll add it to the list. I did one last dry fit using some blue tack before committing and gluing the pieces together. Self-critical Darren here, I really wish I'd glued the head and the claw a bit further down the fist so the fist was more prominent. However, I didn't. <laughs> so, here we are. Self-deprecation aside, I then moved on to the arm holding the Fist of Dawn. Using the Terminator Captain from the Leviathan box, I removed the sword from the hand, but left the pommel and the handle in place. I then used my hobby knife to remove any excess plastic before fixing the Fist of Dawn to the Terminator's arm.
Next up was Lysander's Storm Shield. I did a little bit of umming and ahhing about this as I wasn't too sure what shield to actually use. I did debate using maybe a Deathwing Shield and cutting it down, but I settled on the Blade Guard Veteran Storm Shield as it was kind of more fitting and kind of fit the aesthetic of the original. And then with a combination of my hobby clippers and hobby knife and sanded sticks, I carefully removed the Indomitus symbol that's on the front of the Storm Shield. If you do this, do take your time with this because it can ruin the detail around it. I tried to avoid removing the rivets that are around the shield as well. I did accidentally chop some off. Isn't too much of an issue, but just take your time. I then flipped the piece over and started to remove the forearm guard that was attached to the shield. I kept the hand and the wrist in place as all I was going to have to do is literally transfer that straight onto the arm of the Terminator Captain. I made sure to make small control cuts using my clippers and my hobby knife as well as sanding down to make it as smooth as possible with my sanding sticks. I then used the Terminator Captain arm holding the Storm Bolter and removed the hand and the Storm Bolter from it. I did have to shave a little bit of the arm down so it fits snugly on the shield. And once I was happy with that I then glued the pieces into place. I racked my brain long and hard as to how I was going to replicate the symbol on the front of Lysander's storm shield and I really didn't fancy sculpting or anything like that so I just winged it. It's different, it looks different to what it is on the original model but I think it really fits. So using the Fafnir RAN kit that I used in the previous video, I removed the Imperial Fists emblem that was on top of the backpack, sanded the back down and stuck that to the shield. And as always, I continued to dry fit the pieces together to ensure they worked. Nothing was kind of getting in the way of anything else. And off camera, I stuck the shoulder pads to the arms. For the head, I just used a simple Primaris Intercessor head, the one with a little mohawk in the middle, and just cut the neck nub off so that it fit flushly against the the neck recess of the torso. I did actually do a little bit of green stuff on this later on. I did this little soul patch, however I didn't record it because I'm an idiot. You'll see it later on though. For the little Imperial Fist symbol on his knee pad, I cut up a shoulder pad from the Imperial Fist upgrade sprue. Yes, I know, I still don't have some blue stuff. I really need to get it, I promise. I will get it at some point, I keep forgetting. But let me know how bad I am at cutting these things up in the comments below. You know, I deserve it. Next up, I wanted to embellish the Iron Halo type thing that was at the top of his armour. The original model had a wreath around the skull and I wanted to kind of do something very similar to that. So I took a wreath from a Primaris Captain, I'll put a picture of him above so you know which one it is. And then with my clippers I began to remove the spikes around the Iron Halo that was already on the torso. Once I'd removed all those spikes, I then stuck the wreath straight on the front of the Iron Halo. For his little bit of crotch armour, I nicked one of those side armour pieces, the one with the Crux Terminator symbol on it, and literally just stuck it straight to his cod piece? That, yeah, that bit. Next up, I wanted to start the process of the tilting shield on his chest plate, but before I could begin, I needed to trim down the skull in the Imperialis. So using my hobby knife, I just gently trimmed it away so slightly. This was to ensure that the tilting plate actually fit nice and flush against the chest rather than sticking out really ridiculously. And then using some super glue and some one and a half millimeter jewelry chain, I started the arduous and quite frankly frustrating task of adding chain to his chest. Once one end of the chain had dried, I used some old hobby clippers to cut it down to length. If you attempt to do this, ensure that you glue both ends firmly, but also glue the links together using super glue. This will ensure that it doesn't rattle around when you're painting it or anything like that. Unless that's the look you want to go for, then go straight ahead and just ignore what I said. A huge shout out to my patrons. Without you, painting yellow would have been a hell of a lot worse. 
once I'd done all the segments of chain, I then glued the tilting shield into place. If you've been enjoying what I'm doing and like my content, then consider subscribing and chucking me a cheeky little like. It's totally free to do and it helps YouTube push my content out to more people. There are other ways to support me as well. If you check the description below, there's links to several affiliates and things like Patreon and Ko-fi. But I must stress, your likes, shares and comments mean more to me than anything else. So thank you. For some final touches, I thought the shield looked a bit bare on the bottom half. So what I did is I took some purity seals from the Terminator kit and just stuck them down on there. Just to give it a bit of visual interest. Once those purity seals are dried, I then glued the arms to the torso, based the model, painted him up, which left me with this. And here he is, my interpretation of a more modern version, Captain Darnath Lysander. I'm very happy with how he turned out. I did have a few ups and downs during the process, but don't we all? Just remember, if you go through these phases, don't get discouraged. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much for staying this far into the video. And if you enjoyed that, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and maybe a little comment below as to what you'd like to see next. I'll see you folks next time and thanks very much for watching.